Na nsingwenya mabagi tibabo. <laughs> Madness, right? Welcome everybody. You haven't tuned into the wrong show. It's still GM TV. I'm still your Coco with the most Kinna Coco Moyo and welcome back to another great and exciting episode. Today we're talking about spiritual awakening. Yeah, not the non-talented part of me, right? We're talking about enlightening you on finding out what are the signs of whether you are having a spiritual awakening or not. So stay tuned and grab some popcorn and a drink. But before you do, make sure that you click the subscribe button if you're new and the bell notification icon so that you can be able to get more of these videos. But if you're coming back for the 10th, 15th, 25th, 150th time, thank you for choosing me. Thank you also to the 30,000 subscribers that we have and we're still going strong. Our standing goal, remember, is 32,000. So please get your friends on to this good and amazing content. Again, welcome. <laughs> awakening is a dimension of reality of our confines of our ego the ego being an exclusive sense of self or I and the ego must be able to rise to give forth space for you to ascend in your higher self sounds complicated right in layman's terms it means get over yourself as a person you need to understand that whatever titles you have put against your name, whoever the person that you think you are in society or at your job or the role that you keep in your family does not dictate whether you become spiritually awakened or not. Instead, you have to take off that cloak, that veil and be bare. Literally take in all the energies around you, all the messages that you get and be guided by them and not relying on your own intelligence. Today we're going to be talking about the 10 different kinds of signs that you can get as a person and they vary and a lot of them speak to us on a very personal level. So if you're touched by the end of this episode, please be more reflective than throw bullets. Number one. Feeling as if your life is false. Hmm? That means that the tags that you have against your name, or maybe the big mansion that you bought on the hill, or the speedy race car that you drive, still at the end of the day, after achieving all that stuff that you wanted to achieve, you still feel like you are unfulfilled. Like something is missing in your life. And that is one of the signs that you are actually leaving the world and its possessions and its materialis materialism. And you are looking to have more of a connection on a deeper level. Secondly, you start craving meaning and purpose in just about everything. The conversations you have, the way you live your life. You ask yourself, and like kipela lang, what is my reason to live? What am I sent to the world to come do? What am I solving for? And when you start having those kind of questions, you best know. You beginning to ask deeper questions is third on our list. Now, the frivolous conversations or you just being in conversation with people randomly, you know, they no longer speak to you. You are wanting to really get to the crux of matters. Um, how are we affecting the world? How are our actions affecting each other? How is my not reacting or playing my role affecting and perpetuating to a situation or, 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 or crisis around me? You want to ask the deeper questions because you realize at some level you are also influencing it or maybe by you just keeping quiet is adding on to the turmoil and the destruction that's been caused around you in your family, the community, your job, or the friendships you keep. Have you ever wondered 
or realized rather that a lot of the things that you've been taught is actually a lie. Well, that's fourth on our list. This comes a lot when we read books, conversate with people, especially the older generations or more learned people. When we engage in these dialogues, we realize that actually I have the wrong end of the stick and I don't necessarily know what's going on. Then you feel as if you've been duped and why did you go to school to go learn all these things if you can't actually use them or they're actually falsified? If you find yourself feeling alone, then you're fifth on our list. This is when you are finding that you don't find relatability in the people around you or they can't hold space for you or even that whatever's going on in the world you feel like there's no involvement of you like there's nothing that you can particularly do to better a situation or maybe feel like there's a tangible thing that you can do in the change of the world and the environment around you six is the seeing through the illusions of society this is a mouthful, a big one, because when you walk around our streets, communities, scroll through the posts on social media, it's facades, it's made up lives, made up situations. It's full of skits, fun and games. And you actually realize a lot of what the conversation is that's shared by people is actually such an illusion. Like we're not even dealing with the crux of the issues that bother society or our lives on a daily basis. If you constantly desire to be alone, then number seven is for you. When you feel like the world is just a loud place, it's falsified, it's full of illusions, it is not as true a reflection as it's really meant to be. And most importantly, there's just nothing that's going out there in the streets that speaks to who you are or any of your interests. And that's when you want to retreat and hide away and listen to your own thoughts and your own emotions. Number eight, conversations seem shallow. Now here we are sitting as friends, whether at a picnic spot or at lunch, but our conversations are about other people, about trendy stuff, or even about fashion. We don't no longer speak about anything that has depth. And once you find yourself sitting in a group like this, your mind travels and you start questioning a lot. Like, how am I even keeping friends like this? Because they don't speak to my spirit. They don't add to my depth. If anything, they make me as shallow as they are. A lot of us sitting here have at some point in our lives said this very point. Number nine. I want to quit my job. So how is this a sign of a spiritual awakening? Well, you may find that the work that you do does nothing for humanity. It does nothing for the wellness of yourself or even the people that you are tending to. You sit behind a computer or you are handling a heavy duty machinery and it does nothing for your spirit. It doesn't grow you. Therefore, you feel like you are just being a bot who's being programmed to set at this cubicle and churn out these numbers or just execute a line of code or series of events or requirements. But you don't actually get to feel like you are engaged or your spirit is being moved or as if you're changing the world in any form or fashion. Number 10, you become more aware of your bad habits. Like let's say you sleep in late a lot more or you don't exercise, or the foods you eat don't add to the vitality of your body, or the friends you keep, they affect you in a particular way, or the activities that you do end up having a bad result overall for the person that you are. When you start being mindful of these, you then want to pull away from them, want to improve on yourself, want to make yourself a better version of who you are. And that's how you know that now you got to change your lifestyle. You need to see that we are all one. If not, you realize that actually I have either anxiety and or depression. Those affect you in a very deep and devastating way. We've spoken about them in previous videos and gone in depth of how much it can affect your life. 
One thing that I can definitely tell you for sure is a sign that I've picked up in my own spiritual journey is that I picked up on morphs of synchronicity where you see double digits or certain events that are going on in your life that are repeating themselves or people walking from the street coming to tell you the same piece of information. They're all strangers to each other, including yourself. Now you realize that actually my intuition is being heightened. Those are definitive signs that you are starting to have a spiritual awakening, whether it's voluntary or not, but for the most part, it will still happen. Now you have to open your mind and your eyes and your thought process so that you can actually see them for what they are. So I would like to remind you that a spiritual awakening is not only emotional, but also psychological and also physical. But also to take you back to something that's really exciting that I've been doing on the channel, I hope you remember the hashtag Ask Kokomoy. So I'd like to bring it back so I can have more engagement with you guys and to actually help you solve your problems. So here is a question by Gifile Makazi Maloba. I grew up in a family where my father was physically abusive towards my mother for years to a point where it became normal. My triggers are controlling boyfriends and I don't like being told what to do. I used to get into physical fights with my partners, but I decided to see a therapist two years ago. It's a work in progress. Gifilwe, thank you so much for sending me this comment. And for also realizing that it stems from your past and how much it has actually affected you in your adulthood. That you're even selective of the worst kind of partnerships for you, especially romantically. So which means that you find yourself stuck in a rock in a hard place because you are attracted to all this bad behavior because it's the only form of affection that you've seen between your parents. I think it's very commendable for you to be going to a therapist to work through your issues because as much as it's taken two years to see this person, it means that you've been also dedicated to yourself for that long. I wish you good luck in your coming relationships. And most importantly, I'd like to challenge you to date outside of your patterns because we don't want you to be disengaged when you are trying to fall in love with the person that you choose is special in your life. If you would like to be just like Ukifilwe, then please, in the comment section, put in the hashtag AskGokomoyo and I'll answer your question live like how I did hers. That has been our episode today on the signs of spiritual awakening. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about the actual stages of spiritual awakening. Don't miss that. Thank you for tuning in. Togazan.